Welcome to Straight from the US, the first program in English of We Do Bees, the French media for entrepreneurs. I'm Aurélien Cote. And today I have the pleasure to host a young Frenchman who split his time between Paris and Boston to finish his PhD at MIT on INRIA in France. And during his free time, he started a biotech company. And while he was an undergrad, he also started several associations like uh, Entrepreneur on Economics. Welcome to Xavier Duportet, who is the CEO of Phage X and co-president of Ozon La France and founding president of Hello Tomorrow Challenge. Thank you. Welcome. So <clears throat> before discussing your started company, uh, I would like to begin with your studies in France and uh, in the US. I would like to know uh, what was the difference you see between the two systems? What was the best part in France and the best part in the US? Uh, it's an interesting question. So I enjoyed, I really enjoyed both, uh, I mean, the, the education in, in France and the US. Um, I started as a um, um, bioengineer, um, graduated from Agro Paris Tech in Paris. And I think um, the best part was, um, was when I did my master uh, studies uh, at the CRI, which is the Center for in Interdisciplinary Research in Paris. And it was really, uh, it's, it's a place where, you know, um, I discovered interdisciplinarity. And um, I had to do three rotations, three internships in different labs, um, one, theory, one, one theoretical lab, one, one experimental lab, and then I had chance to go to MIT. But it was really a place where scientists would meet from uh, different fields, but you also meet um, any kind of interested, interesting people, um, uh, well, interested in education, science, um, and all this kind of stuff. And it was really a mind-opening um, year. Um, and then um, I had the chance during this 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 year to meet with my I mean the the, the professor who became my PhD advisor, um, Grégory Bat, who is a researcher at Inria, and um, and I think it was one of the um, best scientists I ever met. I was uh, um, well really good at what he was doing, but also really open um, to um, to what I wanted to do. And he gave me the opportunity to do a, a first internship at MIT in, in the Weiss Lab uh, uh, in, in Boston. And, uh, and then in Boston, what I preferred was um, when I arrived there for my PhD, I just, uh, you know, I was completely swamped by awesome students who wanted to change the world with technology. And this is where I discovered entrepreneurship. So being an entrepreneur is in your blood. Tell us more about Hello Tomorrow Challenge. So the Hello Tomorrow Challenge, um, I started it three years ago. It was called SIE Network. It was for Science, Innovation, Entrepreneurship Network. Um, I started it in France when I was coming back uh, um, to France during my, my PhD at MIT in India. And um, because uh, I, I felt, you know, when I, when I arrived at MIT, I felt so much energy. Uh, and, and also I felt that a lot of scientists, students, uh, PhD or postdocs, um, well, they, they, they were interested in, in, in entrepreneurship, but they were interested in, 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 in tech entrepreneurship, like real um, taking a technology from the lab to a, to a commercial product and not only web entrepreneurship. And as a scientist, I, I didn't feel this in, in, in France. And so I, I created this organization first in France to, um, to, get, to promote tech entrepreneurship and really um, show students and tell students that... Um, well, there is not only web entrepreneurship, there is also an entrepreneurship that can have a real impact when you, uh, positive impact on the world, um, when you start from a hard tech, a lab technology. And so it was, um, it was actually, uh, at first it was only some conferences um, where I invited um, students from every field with every scientific fields, but also every profession. So we had, because to start a business in, 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 uh, in hard tech, you need scientists, but you also need business people. And, and you know, uh, and scientists and business people have to talk more. And it's not really the case in France. I mean, at, at, at the time, like three years ago, it wasn't really the case. And you had scientists that were do, I mean, doing research, and then you had business schools where uh, you had business students, but they would never talk with, with scientists. So it started like that. Um, we had, you know, um, about 200 people per conferences. We did, we did 10, uh, about 10 conferences, and We Do Biz was actually a, a partner of, of, of these events. Uh, but, uh, and then uh, last year, I uh, came back uh, to France um, with a, I mean, I had a bit more time, um, 
my PhD supervisor won't be happy, but uh, <laughs> no, I had a bit more time and so I decided to do something bigger and we did, uh, so I launched the Hello Tomorrow Challenge, which is, uh, which was exactly on the same concept, on the same concept, trying really to promote, you know, um, um, hard tech entrepreneurship, lab, lab entrepreneurship uh, and bridge the gap between uh, science and business. And we decided to do a big, big startup competition. And, and it was only dedicated to, to, um, to, to students or, or, or PhD or postdoc or researcher uh, um, that wanted to, to take their technology um, and to the markets and, and find a way how to apply their disruptive technology to really solve a problem and, and also try to make the scientists think not only in terms of technology but problems and how to solve a problem with the technology. Uh, and so we did this, this huge competition who, who, which, which was a blast, uh, I think. Uh, um, and we got um, about 2,000 projects from 36 countries uh, all over Europe from, from the best universities from EPFL, from ETH, from Oxford, from uh, Polytechnique, from uh, universities in France, basically uh, awesome projects, uh, uh, science-based projects from all over Europe. Uh, and, uh, and that was great. And, to, and, and I'm so thankful for, uh, to, to the team that joined, that joined me because it was a nonprofit, no one was paid. Uh, and, and then, you know, I, I gathered a team of maybe um, 15 people, uh, volunteers, and it was from all over the world, actually, from the US, from France. And, uh, and and that, that was that was that was super nice. So <clears throat> I have a question. So you did uh, this uh, association about uh, gathering the, the people from science, hard science, to uh, with the people from the business side. Uh, your company you started is mm -hmm. a biotech. Yes. Was it a project that you presented during one of these challenge and you won? No. Just a question. <laughs> uh, no, no, not in this challenge. I did not present my, my I mean, our idea uh, in, in our challenge because there is a lot of money. I mean, there was uh, more than 160K to win Whoa. in this challenge. So we gave... We gave uh, did you get this money? Uh, um, so um, the goal, I mean, of the Hell Tomorrow Challenge is not only to promote tech entrepreneurship, but also um, to really bridge the gap between startups and corporates, industrials. And so um, it was, uh, I mean, we got, we got a lot of sponsorship from big companies. Yeah. Uh, uh, because for them it was really critical to meet with startups and we were uh, and we were trying you know I mean, and still this year uh, what we, we try to sell them for the uh, for the sponsor money is basically have 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 a more direct way an informal way to meet with startups uh, um, there is a mentoring program during the during the competition a five month mentoring program during which actually um, these these large corporation can discuss with the startups and help them uh, uh, um, grow um, do, do you have the impression that it's more difficult in France for startups to get access to big corporates than in the US? Um, I don't know if it's harder. I think maybe the mentality is a bit different. Uh, but I would say it's not, mm, I mean, the mentality of startups and also the mentality of, of corporates is a bit different. Uh, and I think there's a, a, a fear uh, between, uh, I mean, from the startup, uh, uh, they, they kind of fear the large corporates. And this is often the case. I mean, and, and this can be, a, this is totally understandable because um, uh, there are so many uh, examples where a large corporation just buy a startup and then kill, it, it kills innovation uh, from the startup. So, and this is also something we're trying to work on where we get a lot of uh, our, our um, big speaker from, uh, from 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 Hello Tomorrow who have lived that who have you know been bought for 500 million 600 million by big companies and then uh, six months after they say well we, I just I just left uh, because uh, it wasn't the same mentality at all they're killing the stuff and so it's really important uh, for us to get the this inspirational guy who have lived that uh, to discuss with the startups and the large corporation who are uh, which are you know involved in the in the Hello Tomorrow. Okay, so now let's talk about your business. What is uh, your business? Uh, I mean, Phage X. Tell us more about it. On a more important, you went to MIT. Yes. You came back in France. Yes. So many French people would have stayed at MIT to start uh, their own companies. Yes. I I'm very interested by uh, why you came back and what is your company. Tell me more about it and tell us. So uh, Phage X. Um, so we, we, we are co four co-founders, uh, scientific co-founders, um, and we all worked on, on, on the technology we are using now in the company. Um, we have, I mean, 
just to say because they're awesome scientists and I would this wouldn't have never been possible without them. We have Tim Lu, Professor Tim Lu from MIT, Professor Lu, Luciano Marafini from from uh, Rockefeller, and David Bicard, who is also a French uh, French man, and he is now opening his lab at Institut Pasteur. And the company, our company, Fajex, is now hosted in Institut Pasteur in his lab. So um, what we developed is um, sequence specific antimicrobials. Uh, wow! <laughs> so uh, put it. I mean, you're uh, gonna lost everyone yes, here. No, no. So yeah, I, I have to. Put, so so putting it simply, um, we have developed a technology that can um, that can very specifically eradicate um, resistant antibiotic resistant bacteria or virulent bacteria. Um, how it works is that we inject a small uh, genetic circuit in the bacteria, and this genetic circuit will scan the DNA of the bacteria, and if it finds a sequence, a, a, gene, a gene sequence like a resistant gene or a virulent gene, we can program it to find this sequence and cut the cut the genome of the bacteria and then the bacteria dies um, so 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 that's that's pretty cool um, we have published uh, uh, I mean the, the founder I mean Tim Lou and David Bicard uh, uh, Luciano Marafini and myself we have published like, two papers that have been out last uh, last week in Nature Biotech on that so we have proof of concept uh, in vivo on we've demonstrated that it can work basically on on, uh, on, on pathogenic strains uh, clinical strains and so now we're trying to push it to the next level and actually you know uh, take this technology and apply it to a real problem um, and so right now we're trying to find our position, position ourselves in the big market of, of antibiotic resistance. Okay, so now tell me why France are not uh, MIT. Why France? <laughs> um, because France is awesome. <laughs> yes, yes it is. Um, no, I think for uh, for research, so we, we, we applied to the Worldwide Innovation Challenge launched by the French government okay. uh, last year. And so we, we, we've been laureate of this challenge. Hey, congratulations. Um, so, so, so we got, um, I mean, a decent amount of seed money. Plus, we've won a few competitions also in France. Um, and, you know, um, Pas Institut Pasteur is, is an awesome place um, um, to do research in, in microbiology. Um, France is also pretty nice to start a uh, company in biotech and in R&D, I think. You know, we have lots of advantages uh, with the Crédit d'Impôt Recherche, uh, with the Le Statut uh, Young Innovative company, Jeune Entreprise Innovante. Um, and, and I think, I mean, you, you, there is a very good ecosystem. Um, it, it's, it's small, but it's there. And, um, and, and yeah, um, and, and we like friends. Uh, so, you know, it was, a, it was an offer we could not refuse. <laughs> okay, just um, you, you are four co-founders. Um. Yes, we're four co-founders. Um, and and the, the professor at MIT and, and Rockefeller University are still there. Um, but, and, um, but, you know, we collaborate with the labs. Um, so it's still very, um, it's international company. Yeah, so in fact, it's an international company based in France. Based in France, yeah. So that's a very, very good example of uh, what yeah, we can Yeah, it's nice. And I mean, we need a lot of capital, you know. I mean, if we want to put a drug on the market, uh, we need at least 100 million uh, euros from, 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 I mean, VCs, obviously. And uh, so even if there are fewer VCs in Europe than in the US, um, I mean, there are still some some quite big biotech VCs, life science VCs, I would say. Um, in France, we have one of the biggest. We have Sophie Nova, um, and 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 you know there is Forbion, there is Advent Venture, and I mean I, I think there is money for for good project. Now we just have to prove that we are we're a good project. <laughs> good. Um, how do you see the difference um, between France and the US uh, in terms of? Um, uh, launching a, a startup. What I mean by this is like, okay, you, you launch your startup in France, but did you think about launching it also in the US or definitely not? Yes. Uh, and if yes, uh, I do understand that you had so many advantage in France, but you think you could have had the same in, in the US too? Um, that's a good question. I think I could have had the same, yes. Uh, because, you know, um, one of our founders has already been backed with like yeah, two companies uh, who have been backed 30 million dollars uh, last mm, year. Um, I think there is a, I mean, the opportunity is there too. Um, and I think we chose France because, I, I mean, because we got this seed money for free. <laughs> uh, we got Institut Pasteur and, and we are French. And I'm also trying, you know, I think, I think, um, um, if you're good, you, you, you can succeed wherever you are. I do uh, agree. But, and I think there is also a, a lot of things that can be changed and that have to be changed in France and in Europe. And so um, if we can have an impact and show to other people in France and in Europe that you can succeed in Europe, then it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, I, I think it's good for, for the European ecosystem. Do you have the impression that uh, the French government improved 
its uh, policy in terms of uh, helping the innovation in France? Um, they are announcing a lot of stuff. Uh, and I think this... Um, I mean, this is political, but uh, no, I, I think... If you don't I, I want think, to answer, don't no, no, answer. I, I think it's going the right way. I think it's going the right way. Um, and they're also now becoming more open to, uh, you know, funding French entrepreneurs, which are outside of French, which is super nice. And, and, and they're... I think it's important that they see that, you know, it's not, I mean, there is a, it's not like the brain drain, but it's good that also people go abroad uh, to learn and to, to learn and start there. Uh, um, but yeah, I think they're doing a lot of stuff. I mean, the French Tech Initiative is starting really to, to, to um, I mean, to, to have an impact. And I think, uh, I think, yeah, I think it's good. It's a good way. If you had um, a piece of advice for our listeners, uh, especially English people who wants to uh, launch a, uh, a startup in France. What kind of uh, tips? Uh, you could um, so I mean, I, I cannot say for any kind of startup. I'm just, I'm just in biotech myself, uh, and this is what I'm experiencing. So, um, I mean, tips. I, I, I wouldn't. I don't know if it's tips or not. But um, there are awesome people in France, like everywhere. Um, and I think if you find the right, I mean, it's exactly like everywhere. If, if you find the right person. Uh, um, um, I mean, just maybe, you know, I, I, I've seen this in the U.S. Um, it, it, it's good to be, um, to be confident uh, because uh, uh, some, I mean, in, in, in France at, at school, we don't really teach you to be confident. That's uh, true. And so if you're confident and you're passionate, be passionate, be confident about your project and, and find the right people to talk to. Uh, but have to be aware that some French people are quite arrogant, <laughs> and so uh, um, be passionate, be confident, but don't 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 bullshit. <laughs> okay, so um, we're gonna pass for to another party of uh, the, of the program of the show is um, the no taboo question. Okay. <laughs> so um, I have several questions in my mind. Okay. So um, give me a number between one and five. Um, one. Okay, what great idea did you have, but someone else beat you at it? Oh, uh, <laughs> it's a tricky question. It's a tricky question. Um, As you are an entrepreneur, I'm yeah, sure no. you're full of ideas, yes. but you were like, oh my God, yes, yes. I wish I was I, there yes, before. Yes. Um, no, there is a simple, so there is a, a simple company that I really like. Uh, uh, it's called Microbiome. It's, it's biotech, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay, it's normal. You are it's, in it's called, it's your called, field. It's, it's called, uh, well, Microbiome and 23andMe, which about, uh, so Microbiome is uh, uh, led by Jessica Richman uh, in, 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 in California, and she's doing, uh, she's sequencing the microbiome of our, of, of, uh, she's sequencing, uh, yeah, our microbiome. So all the, the microbes that inhabit us, that inhabit us. And so this is really cool because, um, I mean, this is directly linked with our company basically, but it's really, the, the, our microbiome, our microbes are like our second uh, self, our second yeah. is part of us. And, uh, and it has a lot of implication on our health, health, uh, mood, uh, a lot of disease, uh, digestion. And so I think this is really, really cool uh, uh, idea. And it's exactly the same that as, as 23andMe was started by the, the wife of, of Sergey uh, Brin, um, I think it was uh, maybe f six or seven years ago, where she, she's basically sequencing, uh, um, um, you know, she, she's, she's selling... Um, you, you can you can you can you, you spit you give your your spit to her you send the spit I mean, to the company and then she sequences your genome and she tells you if you have risk to have this or this uh, disease and I think this is a very nice idea it, I mean it, it still lacks a bit of uh, of of, of um, um, real clinical data data behind it but I think it, it's the future you know genome sequencing is, is is the future good so we're gonna stop on this the future. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Xavier, thank for you coming so much. here today. And um, good luck for uh, with your venture, and I'll see you again soon, I'm sure. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. It was Aurélien Coté.